In this video, I'll explain how to solve an assignment problem by using the Hungarian method. So, in operations research, the assignment problem is any type of problem where you have employees or machines that you want to assign to complete a specific task or a specific job, and the idea is that you only want to assign each employee or each machine to one task. And you want to do so in such a way that you're able to minimize the total cost or the total time that it takes for all of the tasks to be complete. Now, the most common way to solve an assignment problem is by using the Hungarian method. And this is a five-step process, which I've outlined right here. So let's go ahead and jump into an example of how to solve an assignment problem by using this method. So this example says, a print shop needs to allocate four printers to four different print jobs, where each printer has a different number of hours it takes to complete different jobs. Assign each printer to one job so that the total time required to complete the jobs is minimized. So if we look at this matrix down here, we can see that we have four printers and four jobs. So for example, printer one takes six hours to complete job one. It takes five hours to complete job two. It takes 17 hours to complete job three and seven hours to complete job four. So we can see that each printer takes a different number of hours to complete these various jobs. So our goal is to assign each printer to work on one job, and we want to minimize the total time that it will take to finish the jobs. So the way that we're going to solve this problem is by using this Hungarian method. So step one says, find the minimum value in each row, then subtract that value from each value in the same row. So for example, if we consider this first row, the minimum value is five. So let's write a five right here. In the second row, the minimum value is three. In the third row, the minimum value is six. And in the fourth row, the minimum value is three. So what we're going to do is subtract these values from the corresponding values in each row. So for example, if we subtract five from this value, we get a one. If we subtract five here, we get a zero. Here we get 12, and here we get two. Then we'll repeat this process for each of the rows. Okay, then step two of the algorithm says, find the minimum value in each column and subtract that value from each value in the same column. So for example, in this first column, the minimum value is one. In the second column, the minimum value is zero. In the third column, the minimum value is one, and in the fourth column, the minimum value is zero. So now we'll subtract these values from each of the column values. So for example, we'll do one minus one, which this will become a zero. Nine minus one, this will become an eight. One minus one, this will become a zero. And three minus one, this will become a two. And we'll repeat that process for each of the columns. Okay, so we've gone ahead and subtracted the minimum value from each column. Now, I'm going to clean up this table a little bit and update it with the new values. Okay, so I've updated the table values. Now we're moving on to step three of the algorithm. This says, draw the minimum number of lines needed to cover all zeros. If the number of lines is equal to the number of rows, you are done. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw only horizontal and vertical lines, and we're going to try to cover as many zeros as possible. So for example, if we draw a vertical line here, we can cover these zeros. And if we draw a horizontal line right here, we can cover these zeros, and we can draw one more vertical line. And we'll notice that by drawing these three lines, we were able to cover up all of the zeros. So because we only needed three lines, but there are four rows in our matrix, that means that we are not done. So we need to move to step four. Now step four says, find the smallest uncovered value. Subtract this from all uncovered values and add it to the values at the intersection of the lines. So the smallest uncovered value, so let's look at the values that are uncovered. That would be these values right here. They're not covered by lines. So what's the smallest of these uncovered values? Well, there's a couple twos right here. So the two is the smallest of the uncovered values. So what we're going to do is subtract two from all of the uncovered values. So for example, 11 minus two, this becomes a nine. 2 minus 2, this becomes a 0, this becomes a 0, this becomes a 2, this becomes a 1, and this becomes a 3. And then we need to add 2 to the values at the intersection of the line. So for example, we can see that these two lines intersect at this cell. So it was a 5, but we need to add 2 to it. So we'll cross out the 5 and make it a 7. Then here's another intersection value. So these two lines intersect at this value. So we need to add 2 to this 8. So this 8 becomes a 10. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this table a little bit with these updated values. All right, so here's our updated table. Now, once again, we have to repeat step three, which says draw the minimum number of lines needed to cover all the zeros. Now, what we're going to notice on this iteration is that no matter how many lines you try to draw, 
to cover up all of the zeros, you will need at least four lines to cover all the zeros. So no matter how you try to draw all these four lines, you'll find that you need at least four lines to cover all of the zeros. So because the number of lines needed to cover the zeros is equal to the number of rows in the matrix, that means we're done with step number three. So we get to jump all the way to the last step, step number five. Now this says circle the assignment from the row or column with the minimum number of zeros. So what we need to do is count the number of zeros in each row and column. So in this first row, we can see there are three zeros. In this next row, there are two zeros. In the next row, there are three zeros. And in the last row, there's only one zero. Now in this first column, there are two zeros. In the next column, there are three zeros. In the next column, there are two zeros. And in this last column, there are also two zeros. So what we want to do is circle the zero in the row or column with the least number of zeros. So we can see this row four right here only has one zero. So what we're going to do is circle this zero as one of our assignments. So printer four is going to be assigned to job number two. Now to figure out the other assignments, we can go ahead and update our number of zeros. So for example, this row now has zero zeros. Now that this zero has been used up, this column only has two zeros remaining and all of the other columns remain the same. So now we're going to pick the next row or column with the minimum number of zeros. So we can see a bunch of columns and rows all have two zeros. So that means we can arbitrarily pick which zero we want to use. So let's go ahead and pick column one just arbitrarily. So let's say we want to use this zero. So we'll assign printer three to job number one. Now let's update our zero values again. So this column only has one zero, and this row now has two zeros. Now, once we're at this point, we'll notice that printer three, for example, has already been assigned to job one. So printer three can't be assigned to any of the other jobs. So let's go ahead and cross out these remaining jobs. And similarly, printer four has already been assigned to job two. So job two won't get any other assignments and printer four can't be assigned to any of these other jobs. And we'll see that job one has already had a printer assigned to it, so it cannot be assigned any of these printers. So really, we're just left with these four choices right here. So we'll see that job three, it has to be assigned this printer right here because this is the only zero left in this column. So printer two will be assigned to job three, which means printer two cannot be assigned to job four right here. So that means that job four must be matched up with printer one. So the zeros that we have circled are our final assignments. Now to figure out the final total cost, we need to refer to our original matrix of values. All right, so if we look at our original matrix, we'll see that the zeros that we have circled in this matrix correspond to this cell, this cell, this cell, and this cell. So the total time that it will take for these four printers to complete these four jobs is calculated as seven plus three plus four plus seven. So when we add those values, that comes to a total of 21. And remember, our units are hours. So this is how we can assign each printer to only one job and minimize the total time that it will take to complete the jobs. Now, one last thing that I do want to mention is that there is more than one potential way to assign these printers to these jobs and also end up with 21 hours. So just as a quick example, we could have assigned printer two to job four, printer three to job three, printer four to job two, and printer one to job one. So if you add up all of these hours, it also comes to 21 hours. So it's the same minimum time that we just found, but it's just a different assignment. And the reason for that is recall over here when we were choosing which assignments to make, in many scenarios, there were two zeros in a column or a row. So we kind of just chose arbitrarily. So for this particular example, there was more than one way to make the assignments. But what we'll notice is that there's no way to get less than 21 hours as our final answer. So the Hungarian method guarantees that we're going to find the minimum cost or the minimum time. But just keep in mind that sometimes there is more than one potential solution that will lead to the same minimum value.